Hello Faithful Oilers, I'm coming to you with another presentation that I recently put on all about the hormones and fragrances and how fragrances can actually be making you sick by disrupting your hormones. So I will discuss all sorts of wonderful things in this presentation and at the class that I put on we did a make and take where we made our own fragrances and it turned out to be a really fun class. So I will be attaching two of the uh, documents that I use to describe what Young Living Oils um, have the certain notes to make fragrances, and then also recipe ideas on how to make your own fragrance. And so sit back, we're going to talk all about fragrances, how they're toxic um, in terms of synthetic versus natural, and then we're going to talk a lot on hormones and how you can understand who you are and what's going on for your hormones, your thyroid, your adrenal glands, your digestive system. It's a it's a whole big package of information. So sit back tight. There's a lot to share and you'll be so glad because once I understood how these all all these hormones connected to how I operate as a female and um, men out there too, I just I I just a light bulb went off and so I just want to encourage you to sit tight and listen and replay this video if you need to continue to learn all that you can alright so here we go we're gonna start with um, switching my there we go so we're making um, your own fragrances in this make and take and then we are supporting our hormones through nutrition and other oils that Young Living produces um, to help everyone with all sorts of ailments. So those who have not met me yet, I'm Dr. Faye Schumann and I'm a chiropractor and I have two fabulous boys and an awesome wonderful husband and why do I do this? Why am I so passionate about natural health? Well my father was um, a naturopath doctor who survived stage 4 cancer and let's just say it put a bug in the rest of us children. And so, therefore, I want to share with whoever I can the wonderful miracles of using alternative therapies such as the essential oils, nutrition, uh, chiropractic, you name it. Um, we love to use it in conjunction with modern medicine. And when we use both, smart, and everybody works together, everyone wins. And so, let's get started. Okay, so I'm going to educate on the fragrances that are out there currently, but a little history here. Uh, Coco Chanel is a very popular fragrance. In fact, most everyone has heard of Chanel Number no. 5. And Coco's creation was created in 1921, and we most, most of us know it's the most famous perfume in the world. And it became not only the most successful fragrant creation, the first to contain a fully synthetic material, um, mainly an aldehyde, and they used to, they were experimenting with these chemicals, um, aldehyde groups, and they found that they could be pretty fruity or pleasant in, s in smell. Um, however, the Chanel number also does contain some natural ingredients, and one of them, which I was surprised to hear this, is the Ylang Ylang flower. And Young Living has a beautiful scent of Ylang Ylang that's completely 100% all essential oil. It's not adulterated, it's not synthetically made, um, and you can make your own, I guess, version of Coco Chanel that's not toxic. So, with that being said, Coco Chanel's creation is now getting publicized for the numerous ingredients that are synthetic and causing allergens as well as the most common toxic ingredients linked to female reproductive issues and even cancer. So finding fragrances in your home, they are everywhere. You're going to find them in your scented candles, your dryer sheets, air fresheners, potpourri, your fragrance sprays, you know, the ones that you spray to kind of defunk the room. Common ones would be Febreze and Lysol. And then perfume. You know, there's so many people wearing perfumes. And then, of course, your scented hand, body wash, 
you name it. Anything that's kind of frou frou smelling and you know you're going to parties, you're going into um the the fragrance stores or the, the bed bath and beyond stores where there's so many frou frou smelly things, um more than likely those are all synthetic toxic chemicals that you want to avoid. And why do we want to avoid? Well, the sweet smell of death. Did you know that 60% of what you put on your skin, which is your largest organ, gets absorbed into your bloodstream? And unlike your kidneys and liver that act as your body's filter, the skin is all on its own. 95% of the chemicals in most commercial fragrances are synthetic compounds derived from petroleum and natural gas known as petrochemicals. And that's scary. Um, that's going to be your, even like your your Vicks vapor rub is, you know, supposed to be helpful in opening up, you know, airways. But you're also putting on a petroleum. You're putting gas products on your skin, and so those are toxic. And so on average, 80% of fragrance formulations are comprised of these chemicals, and in some cases, 100% of a formula can be synthetic. Our skin absorbs these man-made chemicals in a few ways, by direct application and by contact with the fragrance items, and by exposure to air containing fragrances and that they can accumulate in your body organs. They also trigger allergic reactions, migraines, asthma attacks, nausea, eczema, and a whole host of other sensitivities. There are recommendations for pregnant women to refrain from wearing artificial scents because it does get into the blood system and babies are being born pre-polluted with a lot of these chemicals that are found in fragrances. So the toxic list. And so we have um, the most common... I do not know where that up there. Okay, sorry. So the so common the common toxic list that you're gonna find are gonna be parabens. It's a commonly used synthetic uh, preservative in many fragrances, and they can interfere with the production and release of hormones. A lot of parents have lobbied to get um, BPA and all these other toxic words that you'll hear about out of baby bottles and baby toys and whatnot. Then there's phthalates, and this is a popular fragrance preservative. It's usually highly concentrated in most commercial perfumes, also a known carcinogen. Health effects may include damage to the liver and kidneys, birth defects, decreased sperm counts, and early breast development in girls and boys. Lab animals given the dibutyl phthalate had higher numbers of offspring with birth defects especially in the male reproductive system. And then there's synthetic musks, and studies have shown that several types of synthetic musks not only may disrupt hormones, but traces have been found in fat tissue, breast milk, uh, body fat, umbilical cord blood, both fresh and marine water samples, air, wastewater, and sludge. And I got some of these references off the, this website. I love this picture. It says, something stinks and it's not my diaper. And how many of you can uh, attest to that where you, you spray a fragrance and it's, it's pretty potent and you know it, it's not right. So why so many chemicals with these, these uh, products? Well, we all know we live in a capitalistic society. And so we, we have secrets and we have things that we do to be able to profit. And so to protect these trade secrets, companies are permitted by the FDA to withhold fragrance ingredients so consumers can't rely on labels and to know what hazards may lurk inside their bottle of perfume. So that gives companies the freedom to load some fragrances with their secret chemicals and sensitizers, the potential hormone disruptors and chemicals, and they're not assessed for safety. So why synthetics? Many artificial perfumes do contain naturals, you know, such as essential oils, but typically it is a small percentage. While naturals are very expensive and rare, 
versus synthetics. There just are certain fragrance notes that you cannot extract from nature. This means that their fragrance synthetic library is very huge and less limited than the naturals, giving perfume companies more options to create their products and more more you know perfumes and you know all the celebrities you can see that they're having their own fragrance lines. So man-made fragrances also have stronger staying power than the naturals due to chemical preservatives which then overpower many of the, the scents. That's why it's so overpowering. So petrochemicals, just there's a recap on that word, it's very toxic to us. In our 21st century industrialized world, we live in a sea of petrochemically derived chemicals, dangerous to our health and our life. All man chemicals are foreign to living systems. As such, they are potentially dangerous to us. Our genetics or our genes are not adapted to handling them, nor do we have the enzyme systems needed to clear them from our system. Included in the group of potentially destructive chemicals are hundreds of common cosmetic ingredients from artificial preservatives to fragrances. And then there are over 7,000 ingredients commonly found in perfumes, cosmetics, and other fragrance products from household cleansers to baby toys. And then a more a thousand of these have already been, have been individually shown to produce toxic effects on living systems. And that's just the tip of the iceberg. So we just want you to be beware of fragrances. And so this, this doctor, Richard Conrad, he authored Perfume Expo Day, Expose, oh, Expose. Um, the synthetic fragrances used in cosmetics and cleaning products may contain hundreds of chemicals. There's no way to know what they are, since on the label it will simply say fragrance. Some of the problems caused by these chemicals are headaches, dizziness, rash, violent coughing, vomiting, skin irritation, and the list goes on. And fragrances draw from up to 5,000 hydrocarbons. And some of the hydrocarbons are formaldehyde, which is a preservative and also a carcinogen, styrene and toluene, and phenol. And these hydrocarbons can cause depression, exhaustion, anxiety, dizziness, headaches, trouble thinking clearly, diminished blood flow, and brain damage, not to mention possible cancers. I don't know about you, but I cannot go through the aisles where there's the the clothes detergents and the fabric softeners and the cleaners and they're typically all in one aisle. I will have to say I never have to go down that aisle because a lot of the ingredients we are able to make our own using the essential oils. Alright so back to the fragrance toxicity. Due to laws protecting trade secrets and we knew this, ingredients are not regulated to be listed when used in fragrances. So mainstream cosmetic companies can and do hide their poisonous concoctions behind the label of fragrance. And I encourage you to go around the house and look and see if there are any fragrances that, um, that you are noticing that smell pretty. Um, even if you, it says natural on there, if there is any word of fragrance on there, I would avoid it. I would not purchase it. And I would look into natural alternatives where the ingredients are indeed listed behind the what's that smell of what you're using. Okay, so I just encourage you to go and look in your cabinets, your your you know behind, under the sink, your fragrances, everything that has a smell to it and has the word fragrance, I would avoid. All right, and so with these fragrances, you have hormone disruptors, and hormone disruptors are chemical hormones that mimic, um, not only carry dangers for male health, and they're largely responsible for the fall in male sperm count by almost 50 percent since 1940. They are also major culprits behind the exponential growth of reproductive disorders in women. And this is from things ranging from PMS, endometriosis, fibroid tumors, 
infertility, osteoporosis, and menopausal miseries. And I'll go into more depth later on in this presentation explaining how it's all interconnected. So a buildup of toxicity in your body's living matrix results in poor circulation and electrochemical stagnation, causing poor cellular metabolism, distortions in the transmission of information, and breakdown in hormone regulation. So it sounds pretty scary, but it is unfortunately the truth out there. And I would encourage you to all look into... Um, let me go back to this slide. There's um, a wonderful YouTube video that I love to play at every class I put on. And it's it's called The Story of Cosmetics. And you can just type it into YouTube. And it's about a 14-minute segment on how all the cosmetics uh, out there, um, fragrances, products, you name it, pretty much everything you see on the shelves, are not regulated by the FDA and you can you know you can see how loaded with chemicals and nothing is being done to regulate what's being put into these products when I first saw that I, I couldn't believe it because I was like well I thought we were kept safe from a lot of these toxic chemicals and that's not the case at all so I encourage you to watch the story of cosmetics um, as homework Okay, so what I want to talk about now, we got an idea of fragrances, synthetic fragrances, and how toxic they are. And now I want to talk to you about the hormone system and how it's all interconnected and how vital and how important it is that you understand how this all works. Okay, so the main things, and it's going to be a lot of the meat here, it's, this is intense 101 of hormones, but once you understand it, you can do so much to gain health back. And so I'm going to be speaking on adrenal fatigue, thyroid dysfunction, estrogen dominance, progesterone deficiency, liver toxicity, blood sugar imbalances, and gut issues, and how all these are interconnected, and if one area is suffering, others suffer. And then it just becomes this snowball of issues that sometimes people just find they cannot get out of without major intervention. Okay, so we have it where in the hormone realm, there are three hormone regions that are so interconnected to each other. And so it's called the hormone triangle. And so we have it where adrenals, and thyroid and sex hormones all play off of each other. If your adrenals are not functioning, then your thyroid and sex, sex hormones suffer. If your thyroid's not functioning, your adrenals and sex hormones don't function. If your sex hormones are off, it affects your adrenals and your thyroid. So keep that in mind that they are all related and that they all affect one another. So as an example, we're just going to give you ideas of how the adrenals, the thyroid, and the hormones all work together. Low thyroid function, which the thyroid, for some people who don't understand the thyroid or don't know where that is, the thyroid is a gland right about right where your, um, your thyroid cartilage is. It's kind of a hard area, but it's two little glands on the side, each, each side. And your thyroid... Uh, is, is responsible pretty much as your metabolism regulator and we'll go way more into deep depth on just how important the thyroid is for everything in your body. So I just want to place where things are. The kid, the adrenals, are they sit right on top of your kidneys and they're tiny little glands and those are responsible for your fight or flight or so your stress hormones. And some more, sometimes you'll hear of adrenal or I mean a uh, epinephrine, norepinephrine, cortisol. And then hormones, I guess I'm specifically talking about the sex hormones, those are going to be your progesterone and estrogen, and we'll get more into that soon. Okay, so when you have low thyroid function, it's almost always secondary to some other condition. Often, adrenal stress, 
chronic adrenal stress affects communication between the brain and the hormone glands. The hypothalamus and the pituitary gland hormone production, which I'll review where those are, right in the brain, pretty much right behind my eyes, there's the pituitary gland and the hypothalamus gland. And those are glands that are so critical and important and they create so many hormones, um, you know, ones that help you with, you know, being able to breastfeed and, you know, be able to make fall like the eggs of when you want to ovulate and, you know, they help regulate kidney function. So someday I'll go into that more, but just want to, you know, that the, the pituitary gland also makes your thyroid gland or thyroid hormone. And so when you have um, adrenal stress, the hypothalamus and the pituitary gland um, direct hormone production, including the thyroid hormones. And when the hypothalamus and the pituitary gland weaken from your chronic adrenal stress, they are not able to communicate well with the thyroid gland. So again, kind of that triangle that I showed, your adrenals get stressed, they affect how your your pituitary glands work. Those pituitary glands can't make the thyroid hormone. So then also adrenal hormone cortisol plays a big role in thyroid health. When your cortisol, which is your stress hormone, raises the blood sugar, um, so your cortisol raises blood sugar when it drops too low, which when this happens repeatedly, it exhausts your adrenal and thyroid glands as well as the brain's control center, which is those two glands I talked about, hypothalamus and pituitary gland. Now, another example, a person with dairy and gluten sensitivity may eat those foods regularly without any obvious symptoms and be totally oblivious to the fact that these foods are firing up the immune system until she does the elimination provocation diet. The chronic immune response creates a chronic stress response that can weaken the GI tract. And I'm just giving you examples here of how it's all interconnected. When the adrenal glands are in constant state of alarm, continually releasing cortisol into the bloodstream, the pituitary gland becomes sluggish from being overworked. As a result, then the reproductive system also suffers which then leads to low progesterone in women and low testosterone in men. And I will review what progesterone is a little later. And then when you have a healthy thyroid and that activity is great, um, it's because you're having healthy levels of progesterone. Okay, so it's, it's all that triangle again that we talked about and how it's all interconnected. It's the communication and function of all your glands working together to optimize each other. So how do you know if you have adrenal stress? So signs of adrenal stress are many. You can have blurred vision, unstable behavior, becoming shaky or lightheaded if meals are missed, um, you're irritable before meals, you eat to relieve fatigue, you can't stay asleep. You cannot fall asleep. Dizziness when moving from a sitting to lying or standing position. Transient spells of dizziness, and that has nothing to do with position. You can just come on out of anywhere. Asthma. Hemorrhoids, which I thought was a very interesting sign of adrenal stress. Fatigue. Weak immune system. Allergens. Varicose veins slow to start in the morning, gastric ulcers, afternoon headaches, feeling full or bloated, oh, I have blurred vision twice, headaches with physical emotional stress, and cravings of sweets, caffeine, and cigarettes. I don't know about you, but I know I personally have had many of those issues um, just from everyday life of being a mom um, and being a student for many years. Um, so, 
make mental notes of all these issues so that you can kind of get an idea of what's going on for you and where you might need to work on supporting. Okay, thyroid imbalances. How do you know if you have thyroid imbalances? Well, the best way is testing of the blood. Um, and I'll go into more depth and detail of what lab tests you want to make sure that you have ran. Uh, because a lot of people may have normal lab values for their thyroid, but still have all of these issues that I'm going to go through. So they can feel tired or sluggish feeling cold hands and feet all over. They need excessive amounts of sleep to function well. Uh, weight gain despite, despite adhering to a low calorie diet. Difficult and frequent bowel movements. Depression and lack of motivation. Uh, morning headaches that wear off as the day progresses. The outer one third of the eyebrow thins. And it's, it's a common, you can look and typically it'll be thin on the outside. And so that's a very common uh, correlation. And then as well as thinning hair. And you can have dryness of the skin and, and scalp. Mental sluggishness. Facial swelling, which I have represented in these pictures over here. Uh, slow wound healing. That's, that's, a lot of people will notice that they get a cut and they used to be able to heal up pretty fast. And if it's taken a while to heal, then that's, that's a sign of thyroid imbalance and it can also be a sign of um, blood sugar issues. And then another one that not many people um, think of having association with the thyroid is if you're extra sensitive to sounds, certain smells, lights, so you're just a little more extra sensitive. You can also have, um, in the case of hyperthyroid, these, these what I listed here were all hypothyroid. You can have heart palpitations, inward trembling, feeling nervous and emotional, difficulty gaining weight, insomnia, night sweats, increased pulse rate even at rest. And some people actually can go in between the two. Okay, so there's a picture of the thyroid gland. Okay, so then... We're going to talk about how do you know if you have uh, sex hormone imbalances. And a common uh, phrase, I, I should say, is called estrogen dominance. It's very, very popular in the natural realm to speak of estrogen dominance. And again, I'll go more into detail of how that happens. But if you have extra estrogen in your system, which is not a good thing, um, it can cause these situations. Acceleration of the aging process, allergies, breast tenderness, decreased sex drive, depression, dry hair, facial hair, endometriosis, fatigue, fibrocystic breasts, meaning that the breasts are a little bit hard and tender when you touch them. They should not be tender and hard. Um, that's, that's a sign of estrogen issues. Sinus infections that linger, uterine cancer or fibroids, water retention and bloating, and that can happen during other times of the month than usual, foggy thinking, hot flashes, headache migraines, hypoglycemia, which is low blood sugar issues, increased blood clotting, irregular cycles, um, whether it be they are long, or they just don't let up, or that they are intermittent, they're not regular. And then there's infertility and miscarriages, leg muscle cramps, memory loss, mood swings, osteoporosis, and premenopausal bomas. So a whole lot of symptoms that are going on in all of these, um, you know, adrenals, thyroid, your, your sex hormones, and it's, it's just interesting how, yes, they're all related, and some of these symptoms overlap. So I hope you're all um, getting a chance to make mental notes of where you're at and what you're experiencing 
so far in the lecture here. Okay, so I mentioned that I was going to be talking about, you know, the, the adrenal glands, the thyroid gland, the sex hormones. I want to touch base on if you also have blood sugar issues and how they too can correlate and add into the list of things that you might be dealing with. So when you have blood sugar issues and you have hypoglycemia, you tend to have cravings for sweets, irritability if meals are missed, dependency on coffee for energy, you become lightheaded if meals are missed, you eat to relieve fatigue, you feel jittery, shaky, or, trem or jittery or tremulous, you become upset easily, poor memory, forgetfulness, and blurred vision. Some of these, again, are related to other situations like the adrenal glands. Now, insulin resistance is very common in the United States. And think about all these if you've had this um, happen to you more than once. If you ate a meal and you got tired, you should not be tired after eating a meal. Um, sometimes if it's high carbohydrates, yes, I can understand that. But if it's just a good, well-balanced meal and you're tired, that means your insulin receptors are not able to help with um, speaking to the cells and clearing out the blood sugar and whatnot. General fatigue, constant hunger, craving for sweets that is not relieved by eating them. This is a big one that I see a lot of people have. You must have sweets after meals. And that's just a sign that your insulin receptors are not, not functioning. If you also have your waist girth, meaning that your abdomen is equal or larger than your hip girth, that can be insulin resistance. Frequent urination, because our body has to clear out extra blood sugar, so we will urinate out the extra glucose. And then if you have an increased appetite and thirst, difficulty losing weight, and um, migrating aches and pain. So how are we all doing here because this is a whole lot of information so far just on symptoms that I've just listed. Uh, now I'm going to get into how this happens and um, deal breakers. That's, that's the next thing I'm going to talk on is what can cause these issues and then that you want to make sure that you are um, approaching in a healthy manner. Okay, so first of all, Factors that can affect the adrenals. And to be quite honest, this can be, you know, the hormones. It can also be the thyroid. But we all know that things happen in life. And it can be from just extra stress. You're fearful. You have body issues. You're not digesting things. How's your diet? Are you, you know, loading up on coffee and caffeine, sugar, white flour? Um, you know, toxins, and just, it all circles through. And we all are guilty of this at certain parts in our life. And some of it, not our fault. Other times, it's we just don't know what to do. We, we are kind of stuck in our patterns um, because we just, we don't know how to get help or we try to seek help. And it's sometimes going after the 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 you know the the symptoms versus the cause. So I want to talk on what we call deal busters to your hormonal health. And when I say a deal buster, it means your if you don't address this, you may not get the health benefits that you are hoping for. So one one important one, you know, I'll just start going through these anemia. And that can be in the form of iron deficient anemia, or it can be B, B vitamin anemias. Um, but just know that if you have low iron, oxygen cannot get to the cells for any metabolic progress to happen. You need oxygen to do so many situations in that body. And so if you suffer from anemia, you need to get that under control. Another one is unstable blood sugar. This is huge, and it's just, it makes sense why 
most Americans are suffering because we are all having issues with our blood sugar and having insulin sensitivities and, and resistance. And so whether it's too low or too high, it's a huge stressor on adrenal health and others. Um, and so we preach a diet in our clinic, and it's called the Cellular Healing Diet. And it's basically cutting out grains and sugars. And when patients can do that, it helps to regulate blood sugar function. Okay, gut infections. If you have poor gut function, inflammation, or infections from bacteria, viruses, or parasites, these can be chronic stressors that overwork your adrenal glands and your thyroid gland and your hormones. If you have vitamin D deficiency, that's so common. So many people are vitamin D deficient and they do not realize it. The best way to get that is, or get that found out is getting it tested through blood work. And then you would have to supplement with vitamin D in high amounts. You can also have B12 deficiency, and that's a, a type of anemia. It's very important for functioning of many uh, cell processes. So you want to make sure you have plenty of B12 um, available to you. Vitamin A deficiency actually is very common as well, and it can help your thyroid, um, it can help your adrenals, it can help your immune system, and one suggestion I like to make is to think about consuming more liver. If you cannot stomach liver, then you can buy tablets um, called desiccated liver. And I like it because it has vitamin D, vitamin A, iron, and another great, um, wonderful vitamin called CoQ10. Wonderful for liver function. So a lot of women have reported just by taking the desiccated liver, a lot of issues have cleared up. They have more energy. Their hormones are not all over the board. Um, so I would, I would encourage you to look up how to get your own desiccated liver. All right, fatty acid deficiency. And so the right fat, which most of us know about good fats and bad fats, but the right fats are essential for proper hormone production and also every cell in your body is needs fat to actually make the cell. And so if you're not getting in good fats, whether that be fish oils, avocados, nuts, flax oil, you know, you have to get them in the right ratios. Um, you know, other ways, you know, we, we do preach on butter is healthy and coconut oil is healthy. Um, and it, it's just, it's so important to get those fats to make hormones and to make your cells. Okay, so it's going to help your adrenals, your thyroid hormones. And it's just so important, and I'm sure most of you have heard about getting enough good fat in the system. I avoid low fat by any means. I do not buy low fat dairy. I buy the full fat dairy. I buy, you know, avocados, nuts, seeds. It's very important that our family is consuming high good or good high high amounts of good fat on a regular basis. Okay, so two more to go here for deal busters. And so toxic exposures, not many people understand this, but because our liver and our systems are so taxed, we need to make sure that we are cutting out as many toxic exposures as possible. Because sometimes it can create immune reactions to environmental compounds, um, and those include heavy metals. And heavy metals are very rampant in our society. We actually find that if you have a mouthful of amalgam fillings and you run a heavy metal test, you will have high amounts of mercury in your blood. Then there are ways and, and suggestions that we make to our patients to remove all the amalgam fillings and then do protocols to remove heavy metals at a nice pace and then we rerun those tests and their levels decrease 
and their health increases. Okay. Another sad situation is that heavy metals are actually passed on from mom to baby. And um, it's just, it's unfortunate, but if mom has metal fillings and mom is exposed to lead, unfortunately, baby's going to have some of the metals passed down. Okay, so I encourage you to understand heavy metals. Molds, a lot of people can be living in a moldy environment and not even know it. And it can be wreaking havoc on your system and you just cannot get better. You're trying everything. You're doing everything possible. You're, you're doing the perfect diet. You're doing perfect everything. But if you're living in a moldy environment and you're not getting better, that's a huge deal breaker. So a lot of people can um, come out to your home and test mold spores and see what counts there are for uh, exposure to toxic molds. And then there's methods to, to rid of molds. And the, the essential oils are really excellent for helping to eradicate molds. And there's whole protocols and books out there written on um, getting rid of molds and toxins in your home using the essential oils. Okay, we also have then prescription drugs or chemicals, which we spoke um, in depth on, um, and those are going to be in our fragrances. Um, so if these go unchecked, your hormone support is not possible. Okay, then the last deal buster is the inability to deto detox the liver or detox via the liver. Our liver is our trash can. It takes out the garbage. And so then um, when you have the liver not functioning, it can't help manage your adrenals, your thyroids, and your hormones because it ha it's not clearing out through to de the detox pathways. And again, your liver makes your hormones and or your sex hormones and it also recycles out the sex hormones when there's too much and lets you eliminate. If your liver is not doing its job, it will recycle the toxic hormones back into your system. And then that's where people start to get estrogen dominance occurring. <coughs> Excuse me. So, ideas to balance your adrenals. Okay, so we've been talking um, on deal busters, and I want to talk then on ideas to balance your adrenals because it's so important. Obviously, you want to decrease stressors in your life, and you want to just check those deal busters. You really do. And then Young Living has a lot of supplements. Um, not many people understand that. Young Living Company is more than just the essential oils. They have put together fabulous blends of um, supplements that do a great job. And so you have Young Living Super B Vitamins. also has other key ingredients for balancing your adrenals. The Young Living Omega Gize, which has CoQ10 and fish oils. The Multigreens and Ninja Red are excellent antioxidant support and liver support and it'll help give you natural energy so that you will not have to rely on caffeine and sugar and sweets to kind of give you that unneeded boost uh, or unhealthy boost okay young living has an oil called um, endogize and that's um, where is that supplement anyway so endogize is a very good support for the adrenal glands Cordistop is another supplement, and that one is going to have um, kind of some herbs that are listed down in here, because herbs, there's herbs out there to help the adrenal glands. Cordistop has some of them, and so a lot of people like to use that to boost their adrenal glands. Then I listed a couple other supplements that you can find elsewhere, um, green tea, phosphatidylserine, evening, room, evening primrose oil, garlic, Licorice tea and root, those, those are things to help the adrenals. And then various other um, herbs and other products that Young Living sells 
but I would caution this last step. I would caution to have you um, get a blood saliva test to see where your adrenal, or sorry, a saliva test uh, performed by practically any practitioner to see what stage of adrenal exhaustion you might be having. And then there's supplements that can help, uh, I guess, boost that or, or uh, help re, re, restart the function of those adrenals. But I give you a really good list of ideas here to help balance those adrenals. There's also other oils to help balance your adrenals. And those are going to be frankincense. It's wonderfully shown that it's been able to reduce cortisol levels by 40%. So wonderful at reducing your stress hormone. Um, issues with sleep, you can use peace and calming. If you use nutmeg um, oil, you can have that rubbed to the adrenals in your back daily. That's supposed to support the adrenals. Um, energy is another essential oil. And you can use those on, on Vitaplex points, and those are found on your feet. If you have um, the starter kit books that, or the, uh, the the essential oil reference books, they will talk about what Vitaflex points are. And some people can use that between 9 and 11 p.m. to see if it helps you then wake up without fatigue because it's supporting your adrenals through the night. You can also use Endoflex oil on the liver or neck, two drops a.m. and p.m., and that's going to support your liver and your adrenals. And then other ones would be bergamot and peppermint. Okay, so we're going to attack the thyroid. Um, I hope we're all doing good here. There's a lot of information again. Like I mentioned, um, everybody when we when we did the class were so excited. It was a lot of thinking and learning. Um, but I just want to encourage you to keep listening because it's it's intense but um, wonderful because it's to me I when I again like I, when I feel like I've understood how they're all interconnected then I have better control of knowing how to help out my my glands. Okay, so the thyroid. So how important is the thyroid? The thyroid hormones, besides vitamin D, are the only hormones that um, pretty much affect every cell in your body. So, let's go over how the thyroid helps the body. It's important for bone metabolism, GI function, so you can get chronic constipation as a common complaint of underactive thyroid glands. It will slow down the amount of time it takes for food to move through the intestines and then this increases the potential of gut infections from yeast and bacteria leading to inflammation, poor nutrient absor absorption, and increased risk of developing food intolerances. For men, now it's a little more rare, but it can affect the male reproduction system can also affect how your gallbladder and liver function. So low thyroid function makes the gallbladder and liver sluggish and thus contributes to gallstones. Growth hormones, um, so those help with the tissue and cell regeneration and that can also make it hard to build muscle even if you exercise. Remember when I mentioned if you have wounds that are slow to heal? This is one of the reasons. It is helpful for your fat burning, um, a reason why people with thyroid issues or underactive thyroid cannot lose weight because their fat burning is not turned on. Then you have insulin and glucose metabolism, and that's responsible for the fuzzy, foggy brain and poor memory. Cholesterol, and when you see high triglycerides, cholesterol, and high LDL, which is your bad cholesterol, it can mean your thyroid. The body makes fat more quickly than it is burned. Your brain chemistry. Your, uh, the adrenals affect energy to the brain, and without that function, that can lead to depression, uh, mood disorders, lethargy, and weight gain. More on how important the thyroid is. It's important for your estrogen metabolism and can lead to breast cancer. 
and how it does so is that hypothyroidism hinders the liver pathways that eliminate the extra estrogen called estradiol. Too much estrogen in the body can lead to breast cancer, uterine fibroids, and ovarian cysts. And that's when I mentioned the estrogen dominance phenomenon. It also affects your adrenal hormone metabolism, liver detoxification. It can't occur properly without a normal functioning thyroid. Stomach acid production. This is huge. If you have heartburn, it's actually not enough hydrochloric acid produced. The burning sensation is from poorly digested food rotting in your gut and shooting up into your esophagus. When you have sufficient hydrochloric acid production, this can prevent food poisoning, parasites from entering, and other bad bugs. It also helps your liver, gallbladder, and pancreas to complete digestion. So if you have these issues, you can do some supplements until you start to um, increase the function of your thyroid and adrenal glands and whatnot. And I will prescribe uh, hydrochloric acid supplements to patients to take with meals. I will also prescribe apple cider vinegar at times. And if you're in a pickle, um, drink pickle juice because of the acid from the um, vinegar brings up brings down the acid in your stomach which actually helps you break your food down it seems backwards but I guarantee you heartburn is because of something else is going on okay it also the thyroid is important for body heat and hot flashes the thyroid maintains your body temperature which can be confusing with perimenopause. Um, so you can get hot flashes with either. So sometimes the testing of your hormones is necessary. And then also progesterone production, which is a, a hormone for females and men. But progesterone and thyroid hormones are intimately connected. And if progesterone is low, it can lead to infertility, miscarriage issues, and more. And then there's that anemia. Um, kind of goes full circle. So if you have anemia or thyroid issues, you kind of have this cycle going. Um, and so you can have B12 or folic acid deficiency or iron deficiency because if your stomach acid is low, you're not going to break things down and you're not going to have good absorption if things are not broken down. And so if that's all deficient, you can then also get low progesterone. So well, as you can see, it kind of becomes this little bit of gnarled mess of how everything's interconnected and how you have to help not just one area of your body, but many. Okay, repairing the thyroid. I want to just reemphasize I'm looking back at those deal busters. It's a very big deal. You have to keep make sure that those items are addressed. And then for repairing the thyroid, we find it very critical and key to get the blood work done. Um, of course, the most standard blood work tests ran are are going to be you know your TSH, your T4, and and whatnot. But what's not typically ran are these two tests. And these we like to test because we find because everyone's systems are so stressed and overtaxed, you can actually have normal thyroid function on your standard blood test ran, but you can miss that you have your body attacking your thyroid called Hashimoto's thyroiditis. And to be able to catch that, your medical doctor or practitioner who is ordering the labs must run these two tests. And if they come back positive, then you have an autoimmune thyroid disease. And that's not good because that can be uh, causing a lot of your issues. But what is good is if you catch it because you were smart enough to ask for these tests 
and then you can know that yes you do indeed have thyroid issues it just didn't show up on the standard panel that is typically ran okay so then you need copious amounts of vitamin D to make sure everything runs and we will suggest 5,000 to 20,000 international units a day obviously depending on parts of the world that have less sun um, I'm from Minnesota and practically every patient has deficiency because we do not get a lot of sun in our region and it's very cold all the time and again then the, the rays of the sun even if we did have sun in the winter would not be sufficient to make vitamin D for us okay so the next one is a huge culprit for thyroid issues um, gluten and grains compete with the thyroid for binding sites I'm gonna pause there Glutens and grains compete with the thyroid binding sites. So for those who think the gluten-free diet is a fad, it's not. <laughs> um, in the United States, I would say because our grains have been genetically modified and sprayed with copious amounts of pesticides, um, that is what's making a lot of the issues occur for everyone for their gut systems and their thyroid. Classically, if you go to Europe, it has been said their breads are not as toxic and therefore people here who cannot tolerate gluten can tolerate in Europe. And Europe does not allow half the things that we do. Um, so keep that in mind. You may have to cut out gluten. In fact, if you do have a thyroid issue, you do need to cut out gluten. It will be the best thing you do for your thyroid function. Okay, so then other things that compete with the thyroid is going to be chlorine. Um, and that's going to be found in our water. And typically if you take a hot bath and you don't put like a, a chlorine filter on there, then you're taking a bath in chloride and hot chloride and it's going right into your body and competing with the thyroid binding sites. Fluoride and bromates also compete. Fluoride is in toothpaste and drinking water again. Bromides are an added preservative added to breads and pastas and cookies. Another reason to avoid those um, food items. Okay, so then we have Juva Cleanse, and that's a wonderful um, product that you can use with Young Living to help um, help with the liver and help with the thyroid. Endoflex again, a very popular oil. This is great for the liver, the adrenals, and the thyroid. And then Thyromin is a is a supplement from Young Living that has um, support for the thyroid itself. And many people love that product and they will not be without it as they feel wonderful on it. And then another great one is Idaho Boost Spruce because they have monoterpenes and those can um, inhibit, inhibit the accumulation of toxins, especially in the liver and kidneys. And these oils, how you use them is by rubbing them over your, your liver um, or on the bottom of your feet. And many people do these as daily habits as they are trying to balance their systems. Okay, the sex hormones. So, we want to understand what makes you awesome and yet crazy. And so, if you're a female listening to this, you would understand what I'm saying. So, I have this little slide that says um, 13 things that PMS stands for. And you can read that. So true. And then I love these e cards. I'm so I'm sorry I was a hateful, foul mouthed, binged eating maniac this week. But now that I've got my period, hold me and tell me I'm pretty. So pretty much everyone can kinda relate to those scenarios during that premenstrual time. Okay, so let's talk about the different hormone stages that women go through. So the first one is premenopause. This refers to the years between the ages of 30 and 50, 
when women's hormones begin to fluctuate and cause such symptoms as PMS, weight gain, endometriosis, fibroids, infertility, and tender breasts, to name a few. So I am in that category, and most of the women who came to the class were in that category as well. They were all experiencing some kind of symptoms from the adrenals, thyroid, and estrogen dominant list that I talked on earlier. Okay, perimenopause. This refers to the few years before menopause when many women's hormones are really fluctuating, causing even greater weight gain, irregular periods, heavy bleeding, hot flashes, night sweats, insomnia, mood swings, thinning skin, vaginal dryness, lacks of, lacks of, loss of sex drive, fatigue, and memory loss. And then we have menopause. Menopause is official when you haven't had a menstrual period for one year. Some 95% of women reach menopause between the ages of 44 and 55, but the average age is 50. So I want to discuss this graph here. This is the cycle of having a menstruation or your monthly, how you do during your month of your hormones. Okay, so it seems a little confusing, but I'm going to mostly focus on the estradiol, which represents estrogen, and progesterone. Okay, so those are the two hormones we've been talking on. So day one is when you first start your period and when you're having menstruation and blood flow. Your progesterone and your estrogen levels are level. Okay, then what happens is your menstruation stops and then there's about seven days to where then your estrogen starts to rise. You can see that rising up here. And during this time, most women are pretty happy and they're, they're feeling good and um, there we go. they're feeling good and they're in a good mood and, you know, getting along with their spouse. They think, oh, I can take on the world. I'm doing great. And classically, then it's, you know, kind of leading up to when you ovulate, which is the time when you want to make a baby. So you're feeling good. You're happy. You're in love with your husband. Let's make a baby. And that's when the estrogen spikes. And then you release eggs. And then that's all that's great. Now, after ovulation, your body then starts to produce progesterone then at higher rates. Your estrogen is supposed to decrease. With this progesterone coming up, it's basically, it helps you to prep your uterus to make a baby. It brings blood flow, makes like fluffy little pillow for the egg if it's fertilized to be able to survive and carry out, uh, I guess, pregnancy. Okay. This is where if your progesterone levels are low, that is where sometimes women cannot stay pregnant or they're not able to get pregnant because the progesterone levels are not high enough. And then that is where um, you can focus on increasing that progesterone to help with some of those issues. The other thing I want to talk on is estrogen dominance. If you have, per se, the estrogen is staying high and you don't have enough progesterone, your progesterone is needed to bring the estrogen down. If you don't have enough progesterone, your estrogen levels will stay high, and that's estrogen dominance. That is where then you start to get PMS symptoms and issues and you're not the nicest person. You're kind of crazy sometimes. You're moody. You can just fly off the handle. Um, and that is because of an estrogen dominance and also a lack of progesterone helping to regulate that. Okay, hopefully that makes sense. So let's talk a little bit more on understanding the hormones. So estrogen, progesterone, and testosterone are the three hormones that are most often out of balance in women. 
They are made by your ovaries and in much smaller amounts by your adrenal glands. These three are also called steroid hormones or sex hormones. Progesterone helps the female body regulate its menstrual cycles. It's essential for creating and maintaining a pregnancy. It balances the effects of estrogen and most of your other hormones are made from it. Estrogen is the hormone that makes you female, endowing you with breasts, hips, menstrual periods, soft skin, and a higher pitched voice. Testosterone is a male hormone, but women also make it in small amounts. In women, testosterone primarily contributes to sex drive and helps build bones. DHEA, which I won't talk a ton on, but I want to mention it, is a precursor to testosterone and the estrogens, meaning that those hormones are made from it. DHEA is made primarily in the adrenal glands and is essential for protein building and repair. DHEA levels decline dramatically as we age, making it a primary biomarker of aging. And there's a few supplements that Young Living has to support your DHEA production. <coughs> Excuse me. Alright, so during perimenopause or menopause, that is again the age of 35 to 55, there is a 75% reduction in the production of your progesterone in the body. It's no wonder that as we age, we're getting older with our, our hormones, women can tend to get a little bit more kind of crazy and not so nice. And most people are noticing that they're, they're just not themselves. So during that same age range, Estrogen only drops about by 35%. So by menopause, the body maintains about half the amount of estrogen but has about a quarter of the amount of progesterone it once had. This reduction in progesterone creates a hormone imbalance and a stage of estrogen dominance. This is the common condition for women in perimenopause and menopause thus leading to those symptoms of PMS and hot flash situations. If you have excess estrogen, it creates thyroid binding pro pro proteins, and this makes it the transport proteins that can carry thyroid hormones throughout the bloodstream. As a result, not enough thyroid hormones can get into the body's cells meaning that it can't do its job. Prolonged elevated cortisol and sluggish gut systems run down the liver's ability to detoxify and discard estrogens. We talked about how your liver makes estrogens but also has to recycle them out and eliminate them. If your liver is not working so hot, it will keep recycling it and as a result, estrogen circulates back into the bloodstream in a more toxic form and becomes overly abundant, thus keep, keeping the, the estrogen cycle going, or the excess estrogen cycle going. And it can be up to a hundred times more toxic. Not good. So that is why some women have such crazy symptoms and they don't know why. Their liver is not doing its job. So environmental stressors such as heavy metals, synthetic chemicals from your fragrances, he or she is creating a chronic stressor for the immune system and the adrenal glands, ultimately affecting the thyroid and hormones. Estrogen dominance causes PMS. The extra estrogen suppresses the thyroid, which causes overall low blood sugar, and then the adrenals have to kick in with their adrenaline and that's where sometimes women can just fly off the handle during that time of the month. And most women do it at their husbands. And in my household, we would have it where once a month, that's when my husband and I would have our arguments. It's classically when I am PMSing. I'm glad to say because I've been working a lot of the areas that I saw I needed help. And I will say, um, thank goodness our arguments have 
really diminish and I don't have those inklings to get really upset at him. So yay! Okay, so estrogen causes also the capillaries to dilate. This can cause headaches or migraines during the period. So if you classically get headaches or migraines during your period, it's because of the estrogen. It also causes waves of hot flashes during menopause. So estrogen is good, but excess estrogen is bad. Okay? And too much estrogen can be linked to breast cancer. Okay? So Dr. Dan Purser, who is actually the medical doctor who de developed this product for Young Living, and this is a product that I use, um, he... He says that if there's an estrogen dominant um, breast cancer, then he would use just the Progestins Plus and not any other things to, to, to enhance the estrogens. I would also, yeah, I would add to then making sure that they have good fats and good liver support. Because um, that liver support is key and crucial to being able to get rid of that es extra estrogen that is creating the unfortunate breast cancer as well as uterine cancers too. Okay, so progesterone deficiency, this looks like you have heavy menstrual bleeding, inability to lose weight, you can have depression, headaches, TMJ disorders, increased acne, lack of libido, miscarriages, this one is very interesting. It's called demyelination neuropathies, meaning that your nerves are losing their conducting help, which is typically fat, and it's allowing for tingling in the feet and toes to occur, and often I've seen it happen in women in their face. Okay, so, and then there's other issues in there in the cycle, and a lot of these hormones can be, again, thinking back to how everything's related. If you have a sluggish um, pituitary gland, which is that master controller of your hormones, because your adrenals are stressed, if you're taking oral contraceptives, if you have postpartum depression, antidepressants, these all can affect how you create progesterone. So to support the progesterone levels, um, I'm just going to say this. I love, love, love the essential oils, but I want my patients to be working on those deal breakers because if they're not working on those deal breakers, they're just, they're wasting their money. They're, you know, they're, they're doing good things with the oils and don't get me wrong. I love the oils, but you can only get so far if you don't work on those deal breakers. Okay, so I just want to hit home, check those out. Progestins Plus is a wonderful, wonderful supplement, or not supplement, it's an oil. And this oil is um, what helps a lot of women regulate their progesterone levels to help balance the extra estrogen while they are hopefully working on their liver to release all that extra estrogen. And so Progestins Plus is this beautiful little bottle and it's has you know, it's clear it has other oils in there to support assimilation and function and the dosage recommendation is a couple drops twice a day and you can put it anywhere I like to rub it in my neck it actually helps relax my neck muscles um, I have many times used it for deodorant I will put a couple drops and place it under and then under and it actually works pretty well to help with some unpleasant smells and you'll find that the less that you're using the toxic deodorants um, you don't stink as much believe it or not those fragrances and the aluminums and all the toxins that are getting put into your lymphatic system um, not good it's just setting up bad stuff to happen. So that's why I use the oils for my um, deodorants. Okay. Alright, so then 
You can also use Femigen, and those are a bunch of herbs that help to support the liver and your hormones. And they suggest two capsules with breakfast, two capsules with lunch. And many people like to use the combo of Progestins Plus and Femigen. And then other oils that help with generating more progesterone. Frankincense, and I can see how that would also help the adrenal glands. They say oregano and thyme and geranium. And so oregano and thyme are hot oils. So I would definitely dilute those if you were going to use that for your system. And I would also say that these would help with any gut infections that you might be dealing with. Okay, so like I said, estrogen is not bad. You can actually support your estrogen, um, but you want to support your liver too. <coughs> so then when you have... Um, Natural supported estrogen, it's, it's good in that it actually protects you from other situations that are, that are known to be called toxic estrogens in the environment. And those are xenoestrogens, classically found in your fragrances and in your plastics. So you do not want to heat up food in the microwave um, in plastics. And try to avoid using the microwave if you can, but if you do, you do not want to use plastic. You want to use the glass. Okay, so these are other products that Young Living has to support your estrogen levels because once you have menopause, you do need, you do need to support um, your estrogen levels and progesterone because, again, uh, those levels decline. So Estro, this is an herbal tincture, tincture with phytoestrogens. And they are protective of your hormone receptors. They, they protect against the bad stuff like the xenoestrogen. And then there's Femigen that I talked about. A couple other ones. Scleressence, Lady Scleral, and Dragon Thyme. These are all supporting for the estrogen, um, not the estrogen dominance, but just overall good estrogen health. Okay. I would highly suggest if you're going to be taking these products, Make sure you are supporting your liver big time um, because we know that your liver is the one making the estrogen and recycling it out. And so you can do all this and it supports the liver too, but it just can't hit home enough to support that liver. Here's a couple support ideas for menopause. Um, so you have basil, chamomile, clary sage. Cypress, geranium, and peppermint. And you can see how they all affect all sorts of areas. Okay. Um, I know there's a lot of essential oils that also add all these in there. And so we have Lady Sclerol. can actually be worn as a fragrance. And it smells really pleasant. And that can support your, your hormones. couple recommended books for reading. Um, there's the Dr. Dan Purser, the one who uh, made the Progestins Plus formulation. He's got a book. Um, there's a doctor, um, Leanne Deirdreff, and she wrote Taming the Dragon Within and Inner Transformations Using Essential Oils. Then there's this is a fabulous book by Dr. Daphne Karazian. And that is where you can learn more on the thyroid symptoms and how everything's related. And I got, you know, I shared a lot of my information from his book uh, because he's he's brilliant. He's a brilliant man. Okay, so let's talk on the blood sugar support and gut support because these are more deal busters. And I want to give you ideas on how to make sure that those are kept strong. Okay, how do you reboot those insulin receptors? We talked on insulin resistance. How do you reboot them? Fasting and cleanses are excellent ways to help reboot those insulin receptors. We also talked on the cellular healing diet, which is the cutting out the grains, cutting out sugar. And if you don't know what that means, you can just Google anything that you would want to make. Um, but for example, 
you wanted to make some muffins, because you like muffins, you can Google grain-free, sugar-free muffins. Up pop will a billion, up pop, or uh, a billion recipes will pop up. <laughs> and you will see all sorts of wonderful, fabulous ideas, and they're all supporting of those insulin receptors. Intermittent fasting is a technique that is used by um, a couple experts in the industry, and that's going to be um, basically you're not eating breakfast, um, you're you're fasting, um, and then you eat lunch about one o'clock ish. You can eat you know classically a good healthy meal, and then you eat a couple hours later, like four hours later, and you eat another big meal. And what that does is it kind of reboots your insulin receptors, your your growth factors. And it, it just kind of gives your body a rest. And people actually do a really good job in actually losing weight with intermittent fasting um, because it kind of boosts the body's metabolism. Okay, cleanses. There's so many cleanses out there. And the cleanses give your body a rest. They help you to, you know, resensitize that insulin, those insulin receptors. We, we like to use um, a product called Swero Gold by Beyond Organic. And we'll have our patients do a four-day uh, fast with that product. And it's all electrolyte-based because it's made from whey water. And it's also highly populated with good cultures. A lot of patients do pretty good on that. And they, they find after that cleanse they have no more cravings for sugar. Okay, exercise, of course, that really helps. Octea is an essential oil. Cinnamon. Sleek Essence, Ninja Red Nitro Plus, and Young Living Green. So these all support the insulin receptors. The Ninja Red Nitro Plus is a great way to boost your body to get some energy um, so that you're not wanting to use like a, you know, like a Red Bull or those energy drinks. And this does it naturally and it just supports your system. And then I have one more homework assignment for you. Um, go on YouTube as well. And you're going to look up 60 Minutes Sugar Toxicity. The 13-minute segment, segment that 60 Minutes put on. And it is a fabulous, fabulous um, article or document that they put together on sugar toxicity. I love this segment. I highly encourage you to watch it. It will kind of open up your eyes to just how bad sugar is for our bodies, okay? And then in that video, it talked on um, dosage for if you feel like you need to have sugar, uh, the, one of the doctors said, if you must, you would have this many calories per day. And it, I did the math and it ended up calculating to be for a female of 150 pounds, 25 grams of sugar per day. If you were to look at any candy bar or any soda pop or whatnot, Gatorade, for example, it's about four days worth of sugar consumption. I don't know about you, but I do not let my children consume Gatorade, um, mainly because of the amount of sugar in there and then the dyes and preservatives. And I, I only have young kids. But if I were to let them have a whole Gatorade, which happens in one sitting, many times more than one, um, I would be wrecking their insulin receptors. I would be giving them so much toxicity. Uh, so I highly encourage you to just understand the amount of sugar that, are, that we're so exposed to. That alone, if you cut out sugar, you're going to be so much healthier and you're going to have so much better function in your body. All right, so that's my two cents on sugar toxicity. If you want to repair the gut, so there's a just kind of a nice little saying. It's called the 4R program. And first thing you do is remove um, things that are interfering with your gut. So you can do a gentle de detox. You know, we talked on um, the Spiro Gold Cleanse. But Young Living has a program. Um, there's just so many cleanses out there, and I encourage you to do something to just remove foods 
that are affecting your system. Also in the remove is foods that are inflammatory. And so a lot of them are food sensitivities. The big culprits are gluten, bad dairy, soy, corn, you name it. So a lot of how I like to um, how I like to describe uh, food sensitivities. Let's just say your gut's inflamed and you have issues going on. Your gut's on fire, and putting those foods in your system is almost like ga adding gasoline to a fire, and so you're just flaring it up, flaring it up, and it just it doesn't give you a break. So that's why you have to remove some of those uh, foods before you can start healing your gut. So then the next one would be re-inoculating your gut. So ample probiotics, spherical cleanses, fermented foods, sauerkraut, kombucha teas, um, you name it. It's just so important that we get copious amounts of good bacteria in our system daily and in all forms and in many ways. Then you can replace, so you can have things to help you um, along your gut healing journey. So it's digestive aids such as hydrochloric acid, and we talked on that with um, making sure hydrochloric acid is present to break your foods down. And then Young Living has essential zyme, and that's a great way to help you break your foods down even further. And or digestive enzymes, if you can get those anywhere. And then Juvitone is another great product, again, to help you with um, breaking things down and supporting your liver. Then the repair part. So leaky gut syndrome is a very huge problem for so many people. Basically what leaky gut syndrome is, is that the, the gut lining, the cells are have gotten damaged and they they kind of let things in typically undigested uh, food particles, uh, parasites, bad bacteria, and then it circulates into your blood. And that is not good because then that can create an autoimmune response and your body can start to attack yourself just from having leaky gut syndrome. So that's where you want to abstain from those intolerant foods. And we highly recommend adopting the caveman diet or clean eating is a lot of way that people can say it. And it's, again, it's basically um, cutting out grains and sugars, rich in fruits and vegetables, bone broths. That's huge if you haven't heard about bone, bone broths. And um, bone broths are basically you take a chicken. Like we buy our chickens from a farmer, and I cook up the whole chicken in my crock pot and um, take off the meat after cooking it and wonderful meal that way. Then I take the bones, all the bones, and I will put them in my crock pot and um, fill it up with water and some apple cider vinegar and you can add salt. There's a lot of recipes online on how to just make crock pot bone broth. And then you just you cook it for the amount of time and when it's done you have this broth that is highly nutritious, has um, like calcium and it has the the collagen and the properties from the bones and the joints and whatnot that go in and heal our gut lining and help us with joints and um, and it tastes good. So you want the difference between like a a bone broth and like a, a broth you buy in the store, you want it gelatinous and you want it like when it's in the fridge, it's gelatinous. Um, that is good bone broth and it's super healing and you can drink that actually as a fast sometimes and just drink bone broth or you can add, you know make soups from it, you name it. Bone broths on a regular basis are very healing for your gut lining. And they're so easy to make. Okay, so then you just want to make sure you're having high quality proteins and fats. And then just a really important ingredient is L-glutamine. And that can be found in um, many supplements on the market. Okay. 
So Young Living Products to help the GI infections and issues. So we have Inner Defense. I, I love that supplement. It will kick butt on chronic issues in your gut. And um, I like to use it when there's a nasty bug that's going around and patients are saying, oh man, I just I can't kick this infection. It's just been hanging on. It's a wonderful oil for that. If you suspect you have parasites, Young Living has a supplement called Parafree. Um, there's Detoxizyme, helps you to continue to break down toxins and supports your liver. Um, Young Living has a product called ICP, helps with bowel motility. Comfort Tone, another one that helps with motility because when you're detoxing, you got to make sure you're pooping. Um, if you're not pooping and you're constipated and you're trying to detox your liver, uh, you're, you're, it's not good. So you have to actually get moving on your gut motility and pooping regular. And then I would suggest getting then the liver and the kidneys detoxing. Okay. Then we have other things like the essential zyme, BLM, Digest and Cleanse. These are all wonderful products from Young Living that help with assimilation and removing of um, just fecal matter that's been in there and you don't want constipation. And I'll, I'll give you my analogy because my dad was a naturopath doctor. Um, this is actually my dad's analogy. Kind of funny just to break it up the monotony of this talk here. Um, his saying is when you have a big poop, you have small hospitals. When you have a little poop, you have big hospitals. So keep that in mind that us Americans, we all suffer from irregular bowels and lots of constipation and you name it. And look at the hospitals. <laughs> we have big hospitals. You go to remote areas where they don't have a lot of hospitals. They're eating, you know, their fermented foods. They're eating, you know, copious amounts of vegetables and fiber and you name it. They have huge poops. Okay, not to disgust you, but wanted to let you know that the fun saying and you want to make sure you're uh, breaking things uh, down and getting them out. And you want large formed bowel movements uh, daily. Okay, so other things that are helpful are Life 5. Um, that's a good bacteria that Young Living makes. And then Melissa oil can be helpful with chronic viral infections. It can support your system to help go after some viruses. Okay, so let's talk about that liver and how you can do what you can do to support the liver. And we're almost finished, okay? So why do we need liver protection? Well, it's very similar to that adrenal gland stress issue. So the smoking, drugs, stress, bad foods, toxins, allergies. So it's pretty much the exact same issues. And so we need to support our liver. Our liver detox in many ways. So there's phase one and phase two. And you can see that phase one needs all sorts of nutrients. So your B vitamins and vitamins A and D, antioxidants, all sorts of things. Glutathione, okay? Then phase two, you need amino acids and sulfur. I'm going to talk about a wonderful way to get sulfur in. And you can get most of these via good proteins and that bone broth, gelatin, eggs, and fish. So it's kind of nice. You can eat a lot of things to help your liver to detox. Okay, so ideas to help your liver, which is your project manager. And did you know that your liver is the only organ that can completely be recovered? That is wonderful because many people will damage the liver with alcohol times and with lots of medications that they've taken throughout their life. So we like to support it with Young Living has a product called Juvitone. It's got dandelion root, beetroot. There's that hydrochloric acid and choline which is very supportive of the liver and the thionine. <coughs> Sulfurzyme has been my absolute favorite recent addition to my lifestyle. It is a powder that also has an injured and stevia. I like to pair it with um, 
like to pair it with magnesium drink that I get from um, the Whole Foods store, and it's the Peter Gilham's Natural Calm. And I I just like to pair the two because they're both a nice uh, fizzy sweet drink that's actually just only sweet with stevia. And I will give it to my kids, my husband. It's kind of a nice nighttime drink that we'll take. And I've noticed that since taking the sulfurzyme, my liver has been working better. I have less swelling and edema and more energy. And so I would encourage you to try the sulfurzyme. Then Young Living has what's called Juva Powder. And that has a lot of cru cruciferous foods. And that, support, that supports your liver very much so. Uh, milk thistle is a great herb to get into your system. A couple products have that out there on the market. Uh, glutathione, we like to use. It's called Asiya. And then other oils to support the liver. And you just apply these daily over the liver. Ginger, spikenard, juva flex. Um, it's called GLF oil, gallbladder liver flush oil. Leadum, goldenrod, lemon and lime. You can add those to your water, and those help with the the um, the assimilation of the liver and the gallbladder. Okay, more ideas to help the liver. The liver likes those cruciferous vegetables: flax seed, chia seed, licorice root, maca root, artichokes, avocados, lots of B vitamins, progesterone. Believe it or not. Cutting out coffee, ooh, that's huge. You don't want to overstimulate your nervous system, and it's really beneficial for those adrenal glands. You want to go to bed early or at the same time every night, and you want to exercise regularly to help reduce stress levels and reducing sugar big time. The liver does not do well with lots of sugar. It can create what's called a fatty liver, okay, and that includes high carbohydrates. And those are cereals, breads, pasta, rice, white potatoes. And it's highly encouraged to, if you eat a lot of um, sugar, or not sugar, um, cereals for breakfast, that's one of the worst things you can do for your system. Alright, so I'm going to recap. So a common pattern for all of this, if we have low thyroid, low progesterone, high estrogen, high stress, bacterial overgrowth, you can have it all playing a role into poor health. Okay, so I just encourage you that all these issues, these are all the deal breakers, just recapping them in a different way. So you just need to learn those deal breakers, then educate yourself on what you need to be doing, deliberate with the, with the oils and the supplements, and then go to town on seeing how you heal. And I will say many times in a lot of this, you're going to have to work with a few practitioners to help, you know, get blood tests ran and to see if you have heavy metal toxicity. If you need to go to the dentist to, you know, replace your amalgam fillings with composite. Um, it's just, it's a journey. But know that it's going to be well worth it in the end. Okay, so then... That wraps up the hormone section, and I'll briefly uh, cover what we did in the in the make and take class on making our own healing scent. And so, with no with with perfumes and fragrances, it's just across the board. And whether it's using natural or synthetic, there's three notes to making a fragrance. So the top note or the head note. That's the first impression that you receive from your perfume. It only lasts for a few minutes, and then it should evoke curiosity. The heart note, or the middle, is also called the bouquet. It can be perceived sometime after the application of the perfume. This forms the fragrance character of the perfume that can be sensed for several hours. Then you have the base note. And the base note is called the fond note. That forms the foundation which the perfume is based. It allows your fragrance to fade out pleasantly and can last as long as the whole day. And this can be only sensed after a few hours of the first application. 
So in the class, I provided a list of essential oils that had what are considered the head note, the middle note, and the base note. And I will put up a link to be able to download that sheet of what essential oils, especially from Young Living, uh, where you can then be creative and make your own scents. And what I did in the class, I had a spray bottle and I got that from AbundantHealthForYou.com and, and I have that link later on here in the presentation. And it was just a beautiful, cute little spray bottle, or glass spray bottle. And I used fractionated coconut oil. I feel like it's a good carrier. It still does a good job with the oils and it's sprayable. Um, I just didn't want to use alcohol because um, that's a very common um, product used in perfumes. And I just didn't want to have to deal with the alcohol. So we did the coconut oil and it worked out pretty well. So here, here's another example of notes for your essential oils. And it's kind of by their vol volatility, meaning how they kind of evaporate. Okay. So just to give you a little science behind how fragrances are made. So for those of you who are new to this, um, understanding the essential oils. If you're, if this is your first time watching this presentation, it's it's kind of a, a oils jump into the deep, hearty, how to help your body with essential oils and the Young Living products. I would encourage you to listen to the oils 101 class um, that I have on my website, and that goes over the, the the basic 11 oils that you get in your premium starter kit of the Young Living oils. And they're so versatile. They are the oils that you cannot go wrong with. They are wonderful. You can do so many things with them. And I talk about that in my presentation. However, if this class interested you and you're like, how do I get my oils? Um, most people start off with this premium starter kit. Um, and that's the 11 oils I was talking about. And you... You have to buy some kit of some sort to be able to buy the Young Living Oils um, at your discretion, at wholesale, whenever you want, and it's great. It's wonderful to be able to get the oils um, whenever you want. It's kind of like your Costco membership to essential oils. And once you have ordered the kit, then you just basically, in order to maintain that wholesale status, you just have to order $50 a year. Uh, it ends up being about $50 to $60 a year. And that's easy to do. Okay, but when you want to get, if you wanted to get an essential starter kit, you can choose between the two. And if you wanted to do that, you can head to my website at drfaceessentials.com or whoever introduced you to this video, um, talk with them and they can help you get signed up as well. It is well worth your investment and you will be so glad you started using the essential oils. When you start ordering the essential oils, there is a wonderful product. Um, it's called the Essential Rewards Program. And I highly encourage everyone who is loving the oils to get on this program. It basically is a loyalty rewards program where you are ordering the oils monthly because you're loving them and you're replacing all those toxic items in your household with all natural, practically 100% organic because the company has never sprayed with a pesticide ever. Um, and that they they are just so high quality. You want to be able to take advantage of ordering um, consecutive months in a row. So this, how this works, if you order consecutive for six months in a row, you get 10% of your order back. Meaning if I were to order $100 worth of product the one month, I'm going to get 10% back. So I get a $10 credit put into my little fun pot of three points I get to use towards essential oil product. 
Okay, the longer you're on the essential rewards, the higher percentage. So for me, I've been ordering consecutively for over 13 months. I get 20% of my order every month back. And I get reduced shipping. So for me, it's a win-win. I am using the essential oils regularly. My family uses them. I see great results make my own items. I don't have to rely on purchasing toxic products from the store. And I'm really actually saving myself a lot of money. Uh, I don't have hardly any doctor bills. Uh, my kids be cut down on doctor visits. And for me, it's been a no-brainer because I'm also preventing um, long-term costs for health. So this is just an example of how it would look on your um, your website that once you sign up you get to be able to just log in and everybody's got their own little website that they can check out you know where to place orders and put their essential rewards on um, so I about this would be okay about seventy three dollars to spend on product it's great so then you can bless family and friends or you can um, get something that you've been wanting to get for yourself that you just were like, I don't want to spend that much. So, I love Essential Rewards. Okay, so here are a couple websites um, that I think are very helpful. Beyondliving.com, OilTestimonials.com. If you have signed up and you have your um, member ID number, you are able to go to oiltestimonials.com and sign up for free. And then you can look up what other people have done to help themselves using the essential oil products. Then there was Abundant Health for You. That's where I talked about heading to that website for any make and take items that you would want to uh, do for yourself or any parties that you wanted to host with friends or family. And I love that website. It's such a fun site. And then, of course, there's my website, drfaceessentials.com. Fabulous site where I uh, put up all my um, recorded presentations. Um, I have, you know, recipe ideas, the videos, a huge reference page on all sorts of things um, to learn more on oils, documents. Um, and then for those who love to share the essential oils, they can share, um, there's a business side of it and they can learn about that there. So there you have it. Um, that is the presentation that we did recently on hormones and how they related to toxins and getting the uh, toxins out of your life and making your own items such as fragrances. And I only wish the best for you. I wish that your brain chemicals and your hormone levels are going to be just right and that you're going to enjoy living. And you're going to be enjoying it with the Young Living Essential Oil, oil product. And so I wanted to just thank you for listening to my presentation. It was a pretty long one. I don't typically record these too long. Um, but I hope you learned a lot and that you can find ways to help your hormone system and use those products to be able to gain your health back. And the best part is it's all natural and it works. You just have to give it time. All right, I wish you the best and blessings to you and your health.